warehouses. Here we have a finished product national distribution centre with 27,000 tote, tote box spaces in the high bay, a low bay, narrow aisle, emirs high, high racking, 2,000, cart and live storage, 1,500 lanes. This is a very high tech, very land efficient warehouse. It's also very expensive and not very flexible. Goods that can be stored in a given volume. Counterbalanced forklifts running 3.5 meter aisles. Breach trucks running 2.4 meter aisles. Narrow aisle running 1.8 meter aisles. And stack of cranes running 1.4 meter aisles. Maximum usable heights. Counterbalanced forklift or reach truck, three pallets. Multi mast reach truck, five pallets. Narrow aisle, seven pallets. And stack of crane, 22 pallets. It's a trade off between the expense and the use of the land. So from standard four, four fork trucks, going up three pallets and taking 3.5 meter aisles to 22 pallets high. 1.4 meter hour stacker trains. Stacker trains are expensive, but use the land very well. They can build up to 40 meters. So here we have a diagram of a rising platform reach truck and a picture of a stacker crane. So a rise truck is medium efficiency of land, and a stacker crane is very efficient land going up to 22 pallets high. Functions of warehouses. The fundamental warehouse trade-off comes from maximising the use of the cube total volume i.e. 100% block storage versus maximising access. Practical warehouses have these further requirements. Continuous picking normally requires separate active picking faces and replenishment buffer stores. Having many different stock keeping units, SKUs and customers may require bulk picking of the same items occurring on several order orders within a time window for subsequent allocation to individual, individual customer order. A warehouse can be a complex system involving a cube maximising and distance travelling, minimising layout of selected bulk storage and order picking layout options. It must minimise the total ton metre. So the idea in warehouse is things that are heavy and last for often travel a short distance and things that are light and asked for infrequently travel a long distance. And the idea is to minimise the total weight times distance, the ton metre. Together with bank, back schedule dynamic task balancing and synchronising of all activities to meet customer order requirements at the dispatch gates. So here we have an individual, uh, an example warehouse whose design is to minimise the total ton meter movement, maximise storage efficiency whilst also gaining appropriate storage density, maximise picker productivity and ensure the design has no bottlenecks under expected conditions. And the warehouse has got a reserve storage area, a case pick area, a value put added area and a load building area. Now ensuring there is no bottlenecks under expected conditions, um, a, a discrete event simulation model such as AutoMod, AutoMod can be built to model the warehouse and varieties of what's called the order profile can be made to see whether bottlenecks will occur. Warehouse design is a complex process via which the following requirements should be met with reference to the following constraints. Requirements Maximise picker productivity Studies have shown that they travel 62%, look 16% and do paperwork for 10% and only picking for 12%. Arrangements must be made to make the picking more than 12%. 
Is the warehouse designed for the peak or for the average? So if it's designed for the Christmas peak, it will be less than full for the rest of the year. And the order profile. If designed for the peak, the data running up to the peak at Christmas should be used to design the warehouse. Constraints. Average planned time to complete an order. Is it two days, one day, half a day or two hours? The cost of land, the shape of site, the cost of labour, cost of equipment and building and operating budgets which are available. Cheap land, large site, a warehouse can be designed which shows only one, one level. If, if, the, if the cost of land is high and the shape of site is small, then for a given size of warehouse you have to go high and use higher tech equipment like stacker cranes. Changes over time in order profiles met and thus the mix of SKU stock, the reserves and picking throughputs required. If order pro profiles change, they must do what they call slotting, whereby in order to continue to minimise the ton meter, SKUs are ranked up and down the groups. Here's Nick European Operations at Mahout, Belgium. Total square feet 1 million. Annual sales approximately $1.2 billion. Number of stock keeping units 22,000 for clothes, 26,000 for footwear. Number of full time employees 616. And the key point average number of items per order 800. With 800 items on an order, it's highly unlikely you would have one picker complete an order. That means that the orders must, must be picked in parallel, with pickers simultaneously picking, picking items for an order. The other point of interest here is that the simulation system concept was done using Automod soft, auto soft software. The nine main potential tasks in a warehouse. Goods and in stock check and cross, cross docking goes straight to six. Two, input sorting to buffer, to input sorting to buffer stores. Three, replenishment batches to active stores, that's the picking, picking pieces. Four, order picking by customer batch. Five, batch accumulation, completion of bulk pick. Six, order picking by customer, resorting the bulk pick. Seven, completing customer orders into roll cages or power ties. 8. Order routing of complete or orders to dispatch gates. 9. Load building assembly dispatch. Last delivery first. Warehouse management software WMS has a role in scheduling, coordinating and ultimately controlling such potentially complex systems. So here we have a mythical FMPG warehouse with reserve stock in a high bay and live storage in a low bay. And the, the replenishment and the storage are kept, se are kept separate. And the gravity fed live storage for either, either pallets or cases will feed to the front as, as each one is removed. And each picking face is laid out that the fastest, the fastest mover is closest to the conveyor and the slowest mover is furthest away from the conveyor. And after being picked, they come down the conveyor to order the assembly and dispatch. The vital universal importance of, of order profiles. Each order has two main dimensions. The number of different lines skewed on an order and the amount of each of these SKUs ordered. By reference to historical orders, maybe in three months up to Christmas, or possibly de de seasonalized for the whole year, both the average number of hits and the average SKU volume moved by a SKU can be established. The mix of picking quantities, i.e. singles, cases or pallets, will detail the mix of picking arrangements. In a fast moving facility, the greater number of lines on order the less likely one picker will pick the whole order, hence some form of batch picking. 
and extremely fast moving systems, picking areas will be broken into zones to maximise picker productivity. Such zones being based around SKUs slotted in groups. And such groups will have similar values of number of hits and average cube volume. The distribution of order profiles will drive both the bulk storage layout, bulk storage technology and the picking methods adopted. So here we have a graph with average cube volume per hour up the y-axis and average pick size along the x-axis. And for a low cube volume and a low pick size, storage drawers followed by bin shelving. For a higher pick size, we move on to carousels. And for a higher pick size again, for, for a low average cube volume per hour, we go to NRL elevating cab trucks. For a medium average pick size and a high average cube volume for, for, per hour, we go to cart and live storage. For a high pick, pick size and a high average cube volume per hour, we go to pallet live storage. Some common picking techniques. Ground level or mezzanine picking. Generally picking rates are in the region of 150 to 180 carts per hour, depending on the size, weight and number of pallet lines to be picked per visit. Higher Peak pick rates, 240 to 300 carts per hour are achieved with flight cartons that can be picked as multiples for particular orders. The that diagram shows mezzanine floor manual picking with conveyor takeaway. Carton or case live storage. Carton or case live storage involves gravity roller bed shelves fed with stock from the back face. The major advantage of this in the system is the high density of product lines presented to pickers for minimal walking effort and first in first out stock rotation. 150 to 200 carts per hour. A conveyor takeaway can give average picking rates of 250 to 350 items per hour. It permits increasing the number of pickers during peak periods to a greater extent than ground level or man riser operations would would permit. So basically you can send in more pickers so each picker is covering a smaller number of number of, of channels and thus during Christmas Christmas rush you can up the, up the capacity of your picking system. Mechanical stock picking. Narrow while elevating cab trucks. Picking rates are similar to the manual system at 90 to 130 car cartons per attendance hour, but with access to a bigger stock face and often a reduction in the amount of replenishment stock movement. These gains are at the expense of a degree of flexibility as the system can only operate with one truck in an aisle and the maximum throughput is determined by the number of trucks available to work the aisles for both picking and replenishment. A variation on truck technology is for a purpose-built single level truck to gather multiple orders 6 to 8 at a time. These trucks can be automatically routed around the pick aisles with the picker informed by, by screen of what to pick at each location for each order, Confirm, confirming each pick by scanning items. So here we have Britvix so Software Drinks Warehouse at Magna Park, Lutterworth by Leicester, op operated for them by a third party company called Wind County Logistics. It's a quick response system with 3,500 orders per day. Highly automated with intake conveyors, pallet AGV serving 24 metre high bay and Calidus open business system solution. It's 90% full pallet and 10% mixed pallet and case. Its picking design capacity is 340 pallets per hour and in the first full year it picked 65.8 million cases. It has 17 aisles, each holding 2,960 pallets, 10 high. Each aisle has 74 double deep bays, 4 times 74 equals 296, 10 high.
An outline process for picking system warehouse design. 1. Via the average prof or the profile length, decide on the picking style. So in the Nike case, it was batch picking. 2. Initial SKU segregation by incompatibility. You don't mix food with bleach and you don't mix spirits with matches. 3. Perform initial grouping based on cube volume profiles and average pick size. How many picks per hour and what, how big were these picks? 4. Generate proposed picking module alternatives, for example live storage or shelves or stacker cranes. These to be subsequently laid out to minimise tons meter of replenisher travel. The amount of picking capacity and thus the number of each module type will depend upon the average total number of picks per hour required for that group. Each module type has a different throughput. So for a given group, depending on the total number of picks will depend how many modules are required to cover that group. 5. Divide locations within each picking module into activity zones, ABC, according to planned picking routes or zones. 6. For each group and each picking module, assign SKUs to ABC zones depending on pick rates. So you want to, mini you want to minimise the ton meter, ton meter within a, a pick zone. 7. Specify rules for re-slotting. Such rules will include changes in cube movement to initiate a change of group. So we have a pecking order between the largest, fastest moving, moving goods and groups and the smallest slow moving items and groups. And a different technology will be used for each, for each group. Warehouse management systems. The management of warehouse operations requires a subtle integration of technologies. Normally it's radio data terminals, RDT, whereby the warehouse management system tells the driver what to pick next. And the driver informs the warehouse management system by scanning the barcode of the item. And the warehouse management system can then drop to the next line of the order. The warehouse management system can't tell the driver to pick more than one of a given item if batch picking is, is being operated. As well as locating and tracking SKUs and incomplete orders, some warehouse management systems can provide slotting data for analysis to keep the system in tune with both changing demand patterns and product ranges. If an SKU becomes less popular, it may drop down the pecking order in the group. If it becomes much less popular, it may change to a different group. If its volume goes down, it may change to a different picking system. So here we have Warehouse Pro, Warehouse Management System, with some functions of Warehouse Management Systems. Radio instructions and confirmations for put away, replenish, picking and staging. Organisation of picking. Activity based replenishment. More picking, more requirement to replenish. Barcode confirmation and shipping labels. Traffic management. Staging and shipping. Warehouse administration. Order pool management. Scheduling. SKU data for slotting analysis. And locating and put away. And finally, here we have a stack of trucks and the logo for the WERC, the Warehouse Education Research Council. This video has not covered bulk storage or bulk storage te technology in order to make the video reasonably short.